Good morning and welcome to the Morning Scoop for Tuesday, February 2nd. This is your Daily Buckeye Fix. I'm Tom Moore. The Minnesota game is in 212 days. The game against Michigan in 298 days. The OSU men's basketball team made some history over the weekend, picking up its most lopsided win over Michigan State since 1987. My guest today is Buckeye Scoop's Matt Goldman. He covers basketball for the site and is the co-host of the Anything But Football podcast. And I mean, Matt, I know this is not like a typical Tom Izzo team, but it was still a little jarring to me to see a Michigan State team just get run out of the building like that. How many in this game? Ball security was their biggest thing, and they kind of proved that it still is their biggest thing because Michigan State kept turning the ball over. It looked really sloppy in offense. And I think that that's been the issue that Coach Izzo has wanted to solve all year. They don't really have the players that they used to have to control the ball and control the possession as well. But I think Michigan State, this isn't the same Michigan State team we've, that we've seen in the past, especially in the Big Ten, so dominant usually. But, I mean, this was a nice big win for Ohio State, carrying the momentum, went 2-0 this week, also beating Penn State. So I think it was nice for the Buckeyes. And I don't know if Michigan State is a tournament team at the moment. I think they're right on the cusp. I was listening to Seth Davis and Clark Ellick at the halftime show, and they also said that Michigan State is going to be interesting this year because the Big Ten is so wide open, so balanced, but also has a lot of depth. So I don't know what to judge at the Michigan State team, but great win for Ohio State overall. Yeah, and uh, you know they, they're starting. You're starting to see the pieces fall into place for Ohio State at this point. You know they're they're winning the games they're supposed to win, and they're also starting to get back some of the guys. We, I mean, last week we talked about the fact that you know, hey, it's going to be pretty big to get C.J. Walker back as he's sort of building up his minutes. He played just shy of 26 against the Spartans on uh, Sunday. How big was that for him to be back out there and contributing? I think it was great overall for the team, especially for C.J. having 10 points, two assists, and two rebounds. The 10 points stuck out to me, especially because I didn't really expect him to have the ability to have that many shot opportunities and especially go to the free throw line that much, especially because I would have thought with someone with a hand injury like that, they would be a little more hesitant to drive to the hoop or just get a little more into it. But CJ played really well, and I think having him on the floor is so great for the Buckeyes, especially leadership role. So I'm going to control the ball finally for the Buckeyes because when they missed him and Jimmy Sotos, Dwayne Washington, Justice Sumer were the guys they relied on to control the ball. And that's where they had trouble during some of those games, especially in the Purdue game, to bring up the ball at points. And that resulted in Ohio State loss. So having CJ back now has resulted in two Ohio State wins. Actually, three, excuse me, with Wisconsin, including. But CJ overall, I think he he's a big contributor. It might not show in the stats, but he's been really helping out this team. I think he gets the ball to places that Dwayne Washington might have not gone to or Justice Sewing might not have not found, like Justin Arns from deep. And that has also helped the Buckeyes to Reno at the moment with CJ Walker in. I mean, you mentioned all the things that he brings to that team. One thing you didn't mention, you know, if it's a close game, it doesn't hurt to have the guy who's bringing the ball up the floor be someone who is, I think he's 49 for 50 from the free throw line this season. That's one of those things that you're not thinking about. A lot of times that doesn't necessarily matter, but it just feels like to me, that's something that probably wins them a game at some point in the next month or two. If you have that free, that point guard, who's going to be the guy who's bringing the ball up the court for you in the closing minutes of those games. That's the guy you want to be like, that's the guy I went on the line. That seems like that's going to win them a game at some point. Yes. EJ's free throw shooting has been excellent this year. And I think that's something that Ohio state fans have been able to holler about a little bit. Cause during the bad holidays, I think, or in the early Chris Holman days, the free throw shooting was not the team strength at all. And that's what cost them a lot of games. And, CJ Walker just being able to control the ball. And if it's a close game, he gets fouled, goes the line. You're most likely having a two for two shooter right there and be able to get two points and either carry that lead or get closer to that deficit. But without Dwayne Washington, I think Dwayne Washington struggled from the line a little bit. Overall, the team has not been amazing from the line. I think we saw Justin Arns, who's a great three point shooter, won one for three on his three point opportunity he had in the Michigan State game this past weekend. And free throws are going to be crucial during these highly anticipated Big Ten games, especially that Penn State game got pretty close at the end last week, and C.J. Walker was luckily able to play in that, but overall, free throw shooting is going to be big for the Buckeyes, and they're going to have a big test this Thursday against Iowa, and it may come down to that then. You mentioned Justin Arons a minute ago. He is shooting just over 50% from three, and you know he's not he's not someone who's necessarily going to be the... We, we have seen him score 30 points a game once, but that's not necessarily something you're going to bank on every night from him. But on nights when Dwayne Washington is off, like that Penn State game, it seems like it's really big for Holtman to have someone else who they can look to 
to be that three point shooter. If, if it's not Dwayne Washington's night to have someone else they can turn to and, and maybe fill that role. Yeah. Justin's played great all year. I mean, I haven't really, I didn't talk well about him on anything, but football cop podcast, excuse me, because his defense just hasn't really shown up this year. And especially also when he gets the ball, if he doesn't have a wide open three point shot, he kind of does his little pump fake dribble and then he gives it right up. So he's not really a force or a threat to any defense besides his three point shooting. So I like to see, obviously Justin takes some, some more shots besides three pointers, but it's been working out so far pretty well. So I'm not going to judge and it's been helping the Buckeyes win. So I can't complain, but Justin Arns, he's overall played really well for the Buckeyes. He's been a threat and the Buckeyes overall three point shooting Seth towns included Dwayne Washington when he's hot. Uh, just as soon has also been playing really well from beyond deep. So they have a lot of range and a lot of three point shooters on this team that have been able to help them get to victory so far. Yeah, Sewing's interesting because he's another guy who I think people probably were not saying super kind things about earlier in the year, and he has seemed to start putting it together a little bit. He had 17.7 rebounds against the Spartans and, you know, started the year slowly. He is starting to, he's another one of those reasons why all of a sudden this is, you know, you, you talk about the teams that look good in, in December and the teams that look good in March. The fact that he's progressed as much as he has and turned into as much of a contributor as he has, he's another reason why this might be a team that starts looking, looking pretty darn good in March. Yeah, Justice, I mean, as I mentioned before we started talk before we started this podcast, is that he's got the intangibles, I think, that most college uh, small fours don't really have. He's got that size. He's got that experience as well of playing with Cal for two years and then coming over to Ohio State. So he really knows what he's doing. I think now we're seeing all the pieces coming together for Justice. His injury he had, and now he's able to get the opportunity. We saw him have the opportunity to play guard a little bit for Ohio State this year when Jimmy and CJ were out. So we got to see a little more from him there. But when Justice gets open, I mean, he's going to be shooting mid-range shots all day. They're going to be going in. So it's been really working out for Ohio State so far, being able to space out and get him open as well. Because if they're going to be guarding Justin Arnes crazy and Dwayne Washington, that's going to free up Justice soon potentially and give him another opportunity to make a shot if they're not covering also EJ Liddell and Kyle Young, which amazes me about this Buckeye team, that there's so many weapons out there that defenses are going to have going to have to watch especially because kyle's dangerous from down low ej's been dangerous all year from everywhere he's been one of the top players in the recent weeks in the country Dwayne's a great shooter justin's a great shooter from deep cj's just a great player overall so this team is loaded with talent i think justice is just another piece to this talent now we talked earlier about the that narrow escape against penn state last week i mean it was a win but at the time it didn't look at all impressive it was just kind of like well they won you never have to think about that game again and then Penn State goes out over the weekend and just bombs Wisconsin. So despite having a losing record, the Nittany Lions are actually 35th in Ken Palm. They are ahead of teams like North Carolina, Oklahoma State, Missouri, LSU, Minnesota, who, you know, those, those teams have records that are like, oh, that would be a really good win. Penn State's ahead of all of them in Ken Palm right now. So I think that that game, looking back at it now, is kind of a good reminder that, you know, there are no bad wins in the Big Ten this year. Like, if you win, like, you have done something. Totally agree. And Penn State, Coach Holman said before the Penn State game that this is an NCAA tournament team. And as I'm tweeting that, I'm like, did he just say that? Because we didn't get to see Penn State yet. They, they've had their COVID issues. And I was like, I don't know if that's right. But OK, I'll trust Coach Holman on that. He knows a little more than I do. So th- when they when they went out there, I was like, all right, this team's not bad. And I mentioned Morning Scoop last week that their point guards are really they, they play really well. But we, I didn't mention their offensive rebounding, which was the key in, in order to stay close with Ohio State especially in the second half, both teams were in 40 points. They're the number one team in the league with the offensive rebounding per game. So that obviously helped a lot, but their guards were really fast. And I think that also hurt a little bit because we didn't see CJ Walker play that much. I believe actually he did play 26 minutes in that game. So excuse me, but it just, they look like Ohio state's guards were a little slower compared to Penn state's guards, which was able to help Penn state beat them on the offensive side a little bit, but Ohio state was able to get it done, especially because they have so much depth in that a lot of guys are able to play. And now we got to see Michi Johnson play a little bit too. So they able to help out CJ Walker and his injury. Buckeyes now sitting at 14 and four, a couple of those losses. I mean, they led by seven with just over five minutes to go at Northwestern and ended up losing by a single point led by three with a minute left at home against Purdue. And then uh, Purdue hit that big three right at the end to uh, win that one. I mean, they're 14 and four could easily be 16 and two. And they're one of six teams in the country right now with five quadrant one wins. That's a, something the uh, tournament committee would takes uh, quite a serious look at. They're five and three against uh, against quadrant one teams. The only other teams that many wins against quadrant one teams are Baylor, Gonzaga, Alabama, Missouri, and Illinois. Now Missouri is no great shakes this year, but 
the rest of those teams like Baylor and Gonzaga and Alabama and Illinois, like that's pretty good company to be in this year. And, you know, it still to me doesn't always feel like it, but right now this team's resume suggests it's right up there with the elite teams in the country. Yeah. You kind of stole the words right out of my mouth that, that, that they're an elite company right now. And it kind of feels weird because coming in this year, at least my feelings were that Ohio state, I think their ceiling was around the top 13. I think that's what I saw them in potentially 13, the highest. And now they're sitting at seven. Imagine if they didn't lose to Northwestern that close game or Purdue 16 two. we could be seeing a top four team currently for Ohio state's ranking, which is kind of scary to think about because we haven't seen that since 2019. And I didn't even think that team was that good too. They almost got, they lost to Minnesota and almost got the number one ranking that next week. And I was remembering like, wow, like they were almost number one. Like what the heck? And now they're sitting at seven. Those two losses were pretty significant, especially because due to the record. But this Ohio State team has really proven a lot of people this year that they are really good. And you mentioned those quad one wins that they hold, especially with Gonzaga and Baylor, who are really good this year, that Ohio State has shown that they are legit and their wins aren't just wins they are big wins and they won on the road especially against wisconsin illinois and at Rutgers. those were impressive and i got to see that Rutgers team in person so it's just i think a big shock to a lot of ohio state fans where they are at the moment they have a big one coming up on thursday as you mentioned against iowa on the road that is you know i think we, we were talking before the podcast you know you look at ohio state and uh they're on ken palm it's like oh they're one of the top teams in the nation on offense and they're also really not very good on defense. And then it's like Iowa is just a more extreme version. They're a little better on offense and a decent amount worse on defense. I mean, I guess give us a real short preview of that game other than, hey, there's going to be a whole bunch of points. Well, I think the Luka Garza hype has kind of calmed down a little bit ever since the preseason. Yes, he's still one of the top players in the country, but haven't heard as much about him as we have we heard in the beginning of the season just because I think that's the way college basketball works. The hype goes up and down for these teams like crazy, especially Ohio State who started as number 22, I believe, in the country in the preseason poll. Now they're at seven. But I think this game, you mentioned already, poor defense, high offense. It's going to be a high-scoring game. And it's going to be just who is able to, yeah, it might sound simple, but who's able to make more shots. It's going to come down to that. And I think Ohio State is going to have to find more options than EJ Liddell because I have a feeling Coach McCaffrey and that staff and this team is going to lock up EJ Liddell. This team is very talented at Iowa. They have a very balanced starting five. They have depth off their bench like crazy. So does Ohio State. So it's going to be uh, interesting to see who they go to next. Will Dwayne Washington get hot? Because he's been very cold these last two games, scoring eight points, I believe, against Michigan State. So he really hasn't had much going at the moment. So they're going to find someone else. Could they take advantage of Kyle Young in the paint for once? Maybe see if Kyle Young can have a high scoring game. Will Justin Arns be shooting a lot of threes? That could be happening again. Could CJ get a bigger role? Or Seth Towns even coming off the bench? It should be interesting, but this could also be where the justice suing train keeps going and we could see justice suing because they might overlook justice. Yeah, that's they might think that 17 point game was a fluke. Personally, I don't think it was. I think this could be the starting point where justice goes on and this team could have two 20 point scores per night. So this is going to be a very balanced team, balanced game. I think both teams are very similar. I just think Iowa's got the big name star with them is Luca Garza. So everyone hears of Iowa and they're really like, wow, I was really good. But you just said this statistically, they're very similar. Eight, eight for seven. It's going to be a very good matchup. And uh, you will um, undoubtedly be uh, talking a whole bunch more about that game later this week uh, with Mick Walker on the uh, Anything But Football podcast. Let people know uh, about that show, what you guys talk about and uh, where they can find that. Well, Mick's been on the recruiting trail lately. So we're going to talk about recruiting where he went in South Florida this week, the seven on sevens. Dive into that more because I'm sure a lot of people love the recruiting here at Buckeye Scoop. And who doesn't want to hear more about all these blue chip athletes coming in, potentially being the next Buckeyes. We're going to talk about that, preview the Iowa game, just talk more about the Michigan State game and pretty much what I just said on here. And then we're going to talk about more of Ohio State's future for basketball. We're going to talk a little wrestling. Ohio State just this week beat Maryland, their first shutout, I believe, since 1982. I'm not sure on that date, so don't quote me. But wrestling, I was watching them against Maryland, so they played excellent there. And then we're going to preview maybe some lacrosse and baseball in the next few weeks. I'm excited because the Ohio State lacrosse team, I'm a big lacrosse guy, so we'll be calling on the student radio as well. But this Ohio State lacrosse team is a top 15 team right now. And it's it, Ohio State Athletics is at an all-time high right now, and I get to be a part of it as a student. So I'm very lucky to be a part of that. Yeah, it is uh, quite, a, quite an exciting time for Ohio State Athletics. Uh, tomorrow is, of course, a National Signing Day, so we'll have coverage of that at BuckeyeScoop.com as well. 
plus uh, men's basketball, women's basketball ranked in the top 15, lacrosse ranked in the top 15, baseball's coming, and softball's coming. It is uh, quite a quite a fun time. Wrestling, as you mentioned, yes, it, I think it was the first shutout since uh, Purdue in 1979, I think was the, the date. But uh, yeah, it's, it's been a minute. Whatever it is, it's been a minute. So yeah, it's uh, quite a quite an exciting week uh, for a whole lot of different teams at Ohio State and quite an exciting week at BuckeyeScoop.com. So make sure you uh, check out our site there. We have plenty of great free content, but the really good stuff is on the Ask the Insiders board. Our Nevada Buck, Bill Green, Mark Givler, Alex Gleitman, Mick Walker, Tony Gerderman, they've, they're all working overtime right now with uh, churning out great content that is uh, for our subscribers worth every penny. Uh, every time we, uh, every time we uh, get someone who, uh, who mentions, you know, hey, this is, tur- turns out you guys talk, okay, you talk me into it, fine. I mean, give it a shot. It's like, hey, you, you weren't kidding. Like, this is really worth it. This is really incredible. It's like, yes, we've been telling you. I've been telling you for 180 episodes or so of this uh, podcast that you should sign up. Why don't you just sign up? Go to BuckeyeScoop.com for become a member there. Also, make sure you check out all of our great podcasts, including Anything But Football with Matt and Mick. Uh, just search Buckeye Scoop on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, SoundCloud, Spotify, Spreaker, wherever you get your podcast, you can find all of our podcasts. Just search Buckeye Scoop to find all of those, and you can subscribe right there. Also, leave us a five-star rating and review, which will help other folks find those shows as well. Thank you guys for joining us. Have a great day. We will talk to you tomorrow.